Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Ted from Brainscratch Comms to discuss the newest Fire Emblem game, or Fire Emblem If, in Japan. So let's get started. So Ted, it's been actually been a while. It's over a month since this direct happened, but uh, April was kind of crazy. There was a lot to cover. So we're finally getting around to more of these discussions, and I thought, you know, gotta talk about Fire Emblem If, because it is looking just really a great step up from the original Fire Emblem. There's so many different details. Uh, I still have some concerns about it, but as of right now, I think this is an excellent follow-up to uh, Awakening and just in all the preview materials that we've seen so far. Yeah, I, I have to agree whole, wholeheartedly. I mean, again, there are some things that kind of concern me, and it's it's not really due to the game itself. It's mostly just due to me wanting to experience the whole thing and it, it just basically has to do with the 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 two sides kind of thing which uh, um you know is, is the the game's biggest draw but it's also really kind of weird and confusing right now <laughs> so uh, yeah <laughs> everything else just looks great at the at this point though like the the graphics look uh, really really nice it's it's such a blessing to have feet like i mean <laughs> i know i know that's been beaten to the to the ground at this point but it's just it's so nice, <laughs> you know. The the cinematics look amazing as always. It looks like a really kind of very, very interesting game in both the good way and also the not as good way, which I'm sure we'll talk <laughs> we'll talk about plenty. Well yeah, let's let's go ahead and get into that because I think you're having the same sort of issue that I am with this whole uh, idea of splitting the game up. Like at first it seemed like a great idea of like, oh sweet, two campaigns within a single game. And that's not exactly how it is. It, it's, you can either, at least in Japan, because we have no idea how this is going to work in the rest of the world, but at least in Japan, you can either choose from the Hoshido side or the Nor side and you get two completely different campaigns. Well, somewhat different. Uh, up to chapter five, the game is exactly the same. But at that point, the rest of the game, which according to an interview is uh, five sixths of the game, is completely different stories depending on which campaign you chose, which is a great idea. And even when I did the analysis, it was like, oh, awesome. And they're really like they show you that moment where you have to pick a side and it's big and important. And like you got all these people on different sides, like you should join us, you should join us. And. I could sort of see somebody like getting dragged in different directions, like which way is the best choice, at least for that first time, uh, for, for that first time playing. But with the games being separate, and it's sort of like well, the choice is already made, so there goes all of that build up, all that payoff. Yeah, that that's basically just my main issue with it, because I, I love the idea of of that choice in games. It's actually. I think uh, almost a step up from the biggest comparison. I think uh, is Shimigami Tensei, which is all about this kind of you know this kind of choice uh, that the entire game leads up to a choice like this in all in most of the the main series games at the very least. And you know you spend the entire game building up to it, and then at the end you get your payoff, which is normally just kind of like a split towards the very end, like one or two dungeons maybe. So I think it's really cool to have that split be at the beginning of the game and then see how one choice made at the beginning can affect the entire outcome of a story as opposed to just the very end. You know, I, I really like that idea, but if you if the choice is made for you depending on which game you picked up off the shelf, it's just kind of kind of odd. Like, let's just imagine a kid, you know, who liked that Marth guy in Smash Brothers, picks up the white version of Fire Emblem off of a shelf and gets really attached to the noir characters... And when you get to the point where it th you think, oh, you got to choose a side, it's just like, oh, I'm going to stay with my Nor buddies. And then the game makes him play the Hoshido side instead. And I mean, I guess it would make sense since they're the guys on the front of the box, but it defeats the point of having a moral choice when you make the choice without being informed about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, there is ways to, that they're try getting around this by the fact that you can get... Uh, purchase the uh, the other campaign as DLC, and then in that way it'll all be in the same you know on the same system, so you can get that choice. But then you run into the problem of okay, well this forty dollar game just became 
seventy dollars. <laughs> you know, the discount's only ten bucks. I don't. I don't know. I miss. Still, like, even if it is like twenty bucks, that's still like a sixty dollar game, which is you know, video games are expensive, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, it's just. To be honest, despite being like a big Pokemon fan, I've never really liked having two versions of the same game. And really, the only reason why I put up with it in Pokemon is because the the version you picked up never really mattered an awful lot. Like, um, like oh, if I pick up white version as opposed to black version, the only thing that's super different is a couple of exclusive legendaries. It's it's not usually ever that important. It's just a few exclusive Pokemon, maybe some minor plot changes like Reshiram instead of Zekrom, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna be wishing, oh man, I wish I could I could have both white and black versions so that I could see N riding a different Pokemon for that one scene. No, nobody really thinks that. It's it's but when you're talking about Fire Emblem in a choice this monumental, there are plenty of people who are going to be like, oh, I've got to play the other side of this campaign and see how it goes if I chose the Hoshido instead of the Noor, or the Noor instead of the Hoshido. And now there's like a, a 20 to $40 paywall in their, <laughs> wall, in their way. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's great to have that much content. I don't, I mean, this is one of those cases where like, okay, I'm getting five sixths of another game. If I get this other campaign, well, technically you're getting ten sixth if you count the 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 third campaign. Well, we'll exactly. Count, you know. We haven't we haven't really got into that one yet. But yeah, let's say you do just get the two base campaigns. That's still like even if it is like only a ten dollar uh, discount or however they have it set up, it's still like that's a lot of game to that, and it's just almost doubles your playtime. It probably does, in fact. I can't get too upset about that. Really, the only way I'm a little upset about this whole decision is, as we said, the split because of the story. Uh, but then you get the whole third campaign, and I have no idea how that's going to go. I guess they'll just go in your own direction and, like, well, screw all y'all, and I'm going my own thing. But that's still, like, again, there's even more to do. Like, this game is absolutely massive if you get all the DLC. Yeah, and, you know, Awakening, even on its own, was a pretty meaty game like there's a i think including all the paralogs like there's a good 40 or so chapters to play and that can take people anywhere from like 40 to 80 hours depending on how they how they like to play and how much grinding they want to do so like you know i i'm i'm psyched to have a, so much fire emblem to be able to play and you know I, since i was always planning on getting all of the the versions of the game anyway it's not that big of a deal i'll budget my spending it's just i wish it wasn't so so confusing you know (laughs) it's i have a feeling they might try to make things a little clearer once it comes to the you know the united states and the rest of the world i hope so at least (laughs) oh man i i I really hope so uh is correct me if i'm wrong there's some sort of special edition coming out in japan with all the campaigns on it correct Uh, so i was able to look up the prices for all these things uh at least in japan so okay. the base game is 4,700 yen. That's like 50 bucks, right? Something uh, like that, yeah. So about 50 bucks. You can get the second campaign for 1,852 yen. About 20 bucks. So exactly, about cut that cost in half. And then you get the third campaign for another 1,852. So basically, uh, you get, you pay the full, full 40 bucks for one game or whatever. And then you get the other two, you can get the other two campaigns for another 40 bucks. And then at least in Japan, uh, they'll have a limited edition that contains both versions of the game, the third path DLC, and several extras. But they didn't actually say what the extras would be, and that would cost uh, 9,250 yen, so almost 100 bucks. Okay, so, like, again, we don't know what the extras are, so we don't know, like, if you're actually saving money on that one, but... You know, if I'm going to get them all anyway, I'd rather just get it in the big bundle and not have to wait to download anything. Yeah, I'm you know? the same way. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this game, so I would I do want to, like, have any cool, like, swag that they might have. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Again, like, really, I, I just want to stress, even though, like, I, I'm kind of, I sound kind of worried. The, the only real worries about this game that I have right now is its release structure, like business crap, <laughs> which is kind of odd. To, to be perfectly honest, like I, I, I'm sure the the gameplay looks great. You know, um, there there was a lot of new gameplay footage shown at the direct. I, I love the fact that enemies can team up because that means that it. I think strategy is going to be a lot uh, deeper in this one as opposed to Awakening. Because if you have the right teammates teamed up in Awakening, you are basically unstoppable. Uh, Donald with anybody is just like god mode, uh, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, unless if you were playing on like lunatic mode, but that's just its own 
other. Yeah, so, no, um, it, it's great to see how they're. Re- I guess we really should talk about the actual game itself because it is <laughs> looking just fantastic. I mean, I like the idea of this story and the way they're like having this th- th- it be this big choice. Uh, we finally learned the name of the uh, blue-haired girl that we've seen pr- uh, prominently in all of these uh, trailers, which her name is Aqua. You know, it just all is. It just seems to be all coming together, and I think that does speak to the quality that this game seems to have. Uh, that we're talking more about its business structure than the actual game itself. Like, there is no worry in my mind that this game is not going to be fun. Oh, no, this game, I have no doubt in my mind that Fire Emblem is, the Fire Emblem If, Fire Emblem 14, whatever they end up calling it in the U.S., I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to be a fantastic RPG for the 3DS, because they've already got the, the, the foundation set in stone with Awakening. Like, you know, they're, they, if, as long as they, the, the small improvements that they make don't, like, drastically alter the game and by all accounts from the trailers that we've seen it it shouldn't then it's going to then it's going to be fun to play without a a doubt and you know even though it's kind of odd release wise the 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 new story and the moral choice does definitely sort of imply that the plot's going to be richer than awakenings which is also very nice so yeah i i'm so excited to get my hands on this game too because um, there haven't been, like, I think there's Devil Survivor, uh, Break Record, but other than that, there haven't been too many RPGs, big name RPGs being released on the system, uh, lately. Oh, wait, Bravely Second, I forgot about that. That <laughs> needs a release date, too. <laughs> there haven't been too many big name RPGs, uh, re- announced for the U.S. coming, uh, next year, so I'm, it, I'm definitely gonna be having this in my, in my system for a while. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm... I'm excited about that. <laughs> it's all, yeah, it's definitely looking very good. And actually, there's, you know, there's, they're definitely playing the same, it seems like they're playing the same amount of DLC support that the, that Fire Emblem Awakening had with its extra missions and all these DLC characters that you could put in. Because at least in Japan, uh, there's going to be some DLC characters that are unlocked with download codes from uh, Fire Emblem t- trading card game packs, which I have no idea if that's coming to the U.S., <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea that there was a Fire Emblem trading card game before we prepared for this, this <laughs> discussion. You know, aside from the the other campaign, like I'm wondering how much the the DLC for for Fire Emblem if is going to be because in if I remember correctly when Fire Emblem Awakening was being launched over here, like the 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 DLC like you could order it in packs to get a discount and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. Even still, like, um, if you got all the DLC in Awakening, I'm pretty sure you ended up paying more than the, the cost for the game itself, so there was a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm just, I'm wondering if it's going to be as, as hard as the Awakening DLC, because some of those missions can make you cry. It's my guess. I mean, if that's what people are looking for with those type of things, it, it kind of challenge almost the other thing interesting is that you know we've seen the japanese box art for the game and it actually does show that there will be amiibo support uh we still have no idea what the support will entail but there's even more reason to use all your uh, fire emblem ami- amiibos wait people have fire emblem amiibos to use i thought that those were only heard of in myths and legends <laughs> well then no, no Nint- isn't nintendo releasing like uh marth in a like second wave so we can people actually can get him this time theoretically <laughs> Well, it's worth a shot. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just I'm wondering like how it'll work. Like if it'll be like codename Steam in that you get like a like oh Robin's in your team now for some reason, or if it's gonna be uh, more like Xenoblade Chronicles 3D where oh you just unlock like figures in the download menu or or whatever. Like I really hope it's the former because um, codename Steam's uh, amiibo support is actually pretty awesome. Well, the, the entire game is awesome. You guys should play Codename Steam. <laughs> totally. um, <laughs> uh, the funny thing is, I'm actually, I would hope for, personally, I would hope for the latter because I don't have any Fire Emblem Amiibos. I don't have an easy way to get Fire Emblem Amiibos, at least at this point. What? You don't have $400 to spend on eBay? Yeah, exactly. So, and I don't have a new 3DS, so I don't really have a point anyway. So I don't want to, I won't want to miss out on that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I think by the time the game comes out in the US, the Animal Crossing thing will already be out so you could get the 
peripheral, I suppose. That's true. Amiibos are a touchy subject. Like, people want them to do more because otherwise they're just kind of sitting there, but people want them to do less, so less content is locked out of the game. It's it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. Damned if you do, damned if you don't kind oh, of yeah. situation. Personally, since I've got a, uh, I've got a Robin pre-order a set in my backlog, I kind of want them to do something cool, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Your selfish, selfish reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. But, um... I guess uh, we talked about story reasons for the whole Nora versus Hoshido campaign, and uh, it actually, there are quite a few more differences than just storyline uh, with these different campaigns. Hoshido is going to be a lot more, uh, I guess, traditional, at least as far as Fire Emblem Awakening. It's going to follow that structure uh, very much so. It just keeps it nice and simple. You can go around, you can level up. Uh, meanwhile, Nora is going to be um, a lot like classic Fire Emblem games where you were just pulled from story to story to story and having a limited amount of uh, opportunities to gain XP for your characters, which made balancing a lot more important. And uh, according to a, a recent interview, uh, the Nora uh, Nor campaign is also uh, diverse with its victory conditions, everything from seizing the location to breaking through enemy lines to defending your... Uh, base and maps with uh, for a certain amount of turns. Once again, very much like classic Fire Emblem. So uh, what do you think about that sort of difference, that they're even like diversifying it that much? I like it in the sense that they definitely listened to people's complaints about Awakening, even though Awakening was a massive, massive success. Mm -hmm. Like, people love Fire Emblem Awakening. It's no doubt that it's probably the most... Uh, the most successful Fire Emblem game to date. But uh, fans of older games definitely have their nitpicks with it, uh, you know, and one of them is, like, victory conditions. I think aside from, like, Tiki, the mission where you defend Tiki, I think every mission in that game is either defeat the boss or defeat all enemies. It may be, like, one or two exceptions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, like, Awakening, fun fun game, but, you know, the victory conditions were pretty, uh, were pretty samey in that game, and... You know, uh, I personally like the world map, but, like, I understand why people would like, you know, the kind of, you have to play very carefully kind of mindset to the older games, because, you know, that's just Fire Emblem's shtick in general, you know, permadeath, all that. So, you know, I, I do like that they have a campaign so people aren't alienated from what they're comfortable with if this is only, like, their second Fire Emblem game. You know, and uh, but I also like that they're they're trying as hard as they can to also have in a very interesting campaign to, you know, to keep people playing on a challenge level. My my only thought is, again, because of the the split in the the versions, it's kind of like what if somebody is like a, a hardcore Fire Emblem fan wants that Fire Emblem challenge from like Thracia 776 or whatever and but likes the Hoshido characters the best, so they have to play the the simpler game in order to be with the characters they like the most. It's you know that's really the only the only uh, wrinkle to that whole thing. But you know I like that they're they're satisfying both sides in a way that's more comprehensive than just adding a casual mode. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm all for it basically. Yeah, I, I'm totally with you. It, it makes sense. I like that they're really just trying to please everybody with this and they're pleasing everyone in not a, a sycophantic way they're just doing it in a way that comes naturally for the game because they have this split they have ways for the newer fans because let's face it you know whatever you may think of fire emblem awakening it is the game that saved this series oh definitely <laughs> we gotta uh, definitely cater these new fans that grew uh, came into it with awakening but I like that they're not forgetting about their older fans, and that, well, that's why we have the Nor campaign. And then we even the, the the third campaign is supposed to be sort of like a halfway point between the two two different uh, um, the Hoshido and the Nor. So I like there's always these different ways of handling things. That's actually the only thing that's kind of interesting to me is is that the the third choose neither side campaign is the the midpoint difficulty because like. Maybe this is just me and my, my Shimagami Tensei experience, but usually in that game, the neutral path is the hardest path because you have to fight both sides. So the fact that it's going to be easier than the Noir path is a little bit interesting to me, but that's not bad. It's just different than what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. So Which makes sense. But uh, all right, well, I think that's pretty much everything for uh, all the Fire Emblem information that's come out since the Direct. But I guess that leaves off with the one major question. Ted, are you going to start with Nor? Or are you going to start with uh, Hoshido? 
Um, I'm going to start with the Nor, no question. Uh, I knew this even before I figured out the gameplay details. Mostly just because that it's just kind of my personal experience. I'm kind of of the mindset that your family is who you have the bonds with, and not necessarily, like, your blood ties. So I feel like if this character grew up with the Noir, even if the country is, you know, is troubled, they wouldn't turn their back on them just because, oh, you've got this family that you've never met, but you can totally trust them because reasons. So <laughs> that's just that's just what I think. And also, I think the idea of trying to fix a country from within is a really interesting premise for a game. So see, I was a little. I'm I'm still not quite sure because when the, the, when I first took a look at this, it looked like it was going to be all right. You're going to be the good guys, or you can be the bad guys because they got this whole dark. Um, atmosphere going on for the Nora side of things. So I was like, well, I always choose good guys first because I'm a goody two-shoes and that's just how I go. Um, <laughs> so I was going to pick Hoshido, but now I'm not exactly sure. So I'm a little undecided, but I think I'm still leaning a little bit more towards uh, Hoshido uh, just because I also kind of like having a gradual increase in difficulty because it's I, it's almost a little dull to me if I start with the hardest the harder setting, then I go back to the more simple stuff. It's easier to just go start start easy and get into the harder stuff. Yeah, I, I can understand that. It's gonna be weird because I'm gonna play the game Noir Hoshido Middle, so it's gonna be weird starting with the hardest stuff and then everything after that's gonna be not as hard. But you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll deal with it. <laughs> play um, on lunatic mode. That'll do it. <laughs> uh, no, no thanks. But now I have a question for you, Derek. Okay. Who is going to be your waifu? Oh, God, I don't even care. <laughs> That's not a thing for me. I mean, if knowing the way I am with these games, uh, you know, I usually just pick some random girl on the other side because I just don't, you know, it's I never got hooked on that sort of thing. Well, who was your Fire Emblem Awakening waifu? I never got far enough to get a waifu. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I need to go back and finish Awakening. It's pathetic. If I had to just go with my natural inclination from what I've seen so far, it's probably the long-lost childhood friend on the Hoshido side. Uh, the, the, the the girl with the short red hair? Uh, Han yeah, Hanoka, I believe her name is. Okay, yeah, I haven't really picked yet. It might be blue-haired uh, maid girl on the north side, or I'd be boring and pick the uh, Aqua. But, you know, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see uh, what happens when the game eventually comes out. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a big concern for me. It's just sort of there. And it's like, OK, if it's, whatever gets me the best benefit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think that covers it for our Fire Emblem discussion. So thank you guys for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And Ted, where can they find you at? I'm a member of Brain Scratch Comms. We do discussions, uh, video game commentaries on all sorts of uh, random games. We may do Fire Emblem one day. Um, I've actually planned for Fire Emblem, but it's going to be like forever from now, so don't hold your breath. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, hopefully that happens sooner rather than later and you can stop by. All right. And of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more on Fire Emblem, including my ongoing live stream of Fire Emblem GBA and other things gaming too. Till next time, guys. Bye. <laughs>